Good morning, Cucamonga Christian Fellowship. Let's try that again. Good morning, Cucamonga Christian Fellowship. That's awesome. Well, welcome on this Memorial Weekend. I just want to welcome you if you're here online with us this morning or right here in the room. We're so glad that you joined us this morning. We have a very fun morning planned for you. It is family service today, so we're excited about that. But before we dive into a, a time of celebratory worship, I want to take a moment and just acknowledge what happened in our country this past week. Yet again, we experienced one more tragedy in an elementary school in Texas this week. And I will tell you, I went to bed on Tuesday night, my heart grieved, and I couldn't sleep. And I woke up time and time again. And finally, I just got up and I said, Lord, what do you want me to do? And he said, I want you to lament. So I got up out of bed, and, and the word lament means passionate mourning and grieving. There is a book in our Bible that is just lamentations. It's laments. It's the people of God grieving over the loss of their destroyed city. And I couldn't help but think the connection there. What's happening to our country? And if you go through the Psalms, you will see that many of them are praising God, but many of them are laments as well. So it's part of who we are as the people of God to be able to lament and grieve. The Word of God says that we rejoice with those who rejoice and we mourn with those who mourn. Amen? So I wrote a lament early in the morning on Wednesday morning, and I want to share that with you today. So church, would you pray this with me? Father God, actually, you don't have to pray the entire thing. I apologize. This is really long. Just in your hearts. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> Father God, you are the giver of life, and at all times, we choose to honor and value life as a sacred gift from you. This weekend, though, we pause to reflect and mourn the many times that gift of life has been lost. On this Memorial Day weekend, we acknowledge and remember the brave men and women who have given their life sacrificially for our country, our freedom, and our values. Your word says that the greatest act of love is to lay down your life for another. Thank you for the act of love shown by the men and women of yesterday, today, and tomorrow who stand in our place, fight battles on our behalf, and pay the ultimate price for that. We do not take it for granted. And yet, in many other cases, the gift of life is taken, not given. So today we lament over the lives that are cut short by horrific, senseless tragedies. Whether children or adults, whether shopping at a grocery store or gathering with church family, or attending school. The list goes on and on. Today we say, O oh Lord, have mercy on us. Forgive us for the violence, for devaluing of life, and for the hundreds of mass shootings that have occurred so far this year in the United States. We cry out to you, O oh Lord, as our hearts hurt and our souls question. We are weary. We struggle to understand how people could commit these horrible acts, and yet also we wonder and grieve at what kind of torment they themselves must be in. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for every mother, father, family member, and friend who is forever changed by the unimaginable. Lord, hear, heal our individual hearts and our collective wounds. May we have courage to be bold in our action and deep in our compassion, to discern when we must listen and when we must act, to uproot bigotry, intolerance, misogyny, racism, and violence in all of its forms. 
and to celebrate the many faces of God reflected in this wondrous diversity of humanity. We pray, Father God, that you would bless and give us wisdom. Give wisdom to civic leaders, pastors, and congregations throughout our country. That through you, O oh God, our hearts might be filled with hope and courage. That our faith may increase and we may be filled with a holy indignation to stand for what is right, pure and holy, for a desire to do justice and a desire to do right, for a desire to be peaceful and to draw together in unity as your children. God, don't let us settle for anything less than your righteousness and love. Heal the hearts of those grieving and give us strength, compassion, and love to walk with them. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Church, it is so important that we lament together, but we also must remember that our God is still faithful. Our God is still on the throne. Our God is all powerful. Our God is with us and for us. And our God is absolutely unstoppable. Amen? Amen. Well, this morning we have the privilege of worshiping and celebrating that unstoppable God with our youth worship team. Would you give them a warm welcome? Let us praise and worship about our unstoppable God. Amen. Good morning, CCF. Let's put our hands together like this. And yes, we serve an unstoppable God. Amen.
this morning, we are here to celebrate all the promotions of, of all of our students that are here. So if there's any children in the house that are here that have graduated or that are promoting to the next school year, we want you to come on up. We have something exciting for everybody. So uh, it's called the balloon dump. And adults, if you feel like a child today, please come on up and let's let's just celebrate our children here. Amen. Let's have fun. Woo! have our being and I think sometimes we're reminded that that should be fun right that should be filled with joy and excitement that should be good we should leave this place we should leave our moments with God our kids should leave those experiences saying that was so good right so turn to the person next to you and say that was so good (laughs) 
You know, something else that was so good was the Top Gun Maverick movie that I saw yesterday. <laughs> Give me a woot if you've seen it or are going to see it. Right. Woot! <laughs> so my, my family and I went and we were sitting in the theatre and before the movie started, Tom Cruise came on the screen and he thanked us for being there. Wasn't that so nice of him? <laughs> and he shared a little bit about what it meant to come together as cast and crew and make that movie, what it meant to work with the real live fighter jets. And the cynic in me was like, he just wants me to feel good that I essentially spent a kidney coming to this IMAX showing because <laughs> it was so expensive. But it got me thinking about church. It got me thinking about our time together. And you know, when it comes to moments like this, when it comes to investing time and talent, when it comes to giving, sometimes I think we can get into the habit of waiting for Jesus to pop on the screen and convince us it was worth showing up for. When in reality, he's sitting in the audience watching us. He's watching this, he's watching this, and he's seeing that it's so good. He's seeing that his plan, his plan A for church, was the very blessed plan that there was. He's seeing that his people show up with enthusiasm and joy and their lives to further the kingdom. And he's so filled with joy. And he walks away from it saying, that was so good. Did you see CCF on Fifth Street? That was so good. Did you see family service? That was so good. Did you see these girls? That was so good. Today, do you want to be the reason that Jesus says, that was so good? I do. So we're going to come to the time of giving in our service. And if you are able to get up here through the balloons, we have <laughs> baskets in the front and the back. We have a giving link online. But I want to encourage you, don't wait for the person on the screen to say, show up. Be part of the action. Be part of the story. Be part of what makes it all worth watching and being invited into. Amen? Amen. All right, let's keep going.
about you, but every move I make, I want to make sure that Jesus is right there with me. Amen? Amen. Well, let me just say this. If you did not move in, the ne in those last three songs, you must be asleep. Because you couldn't help but move, especially watching our young church. Praise the Lord. Amen? So good. You know, uh, one time we were on a mission trip in Kenya, and we were in this little village, and we were at church. And the pastor got up there, and after we were worshiping, he said, you know how to tell if there's sin in your life, if you were not moving during worship. And I will tell you, those of us on the front row who look like me begin to move every time they started worshiping. It was awesome. But I think about that every time I start to dance before the Lord and worship Him. It's so good to worship the Lord with joy and movement and dance. Amen. Amen. Well, it's so good to be here this morning with all of you. We have just a couple of announcements and something very special for you in just a moment. But I'm going to ask Lance Asbro to join me up here on the platform. Would you give our friend Lance a warm welcome? Lance is part of our Servants Council and part of our leadership for our intercessory team. And he has a very special announcement to share with you this morning. Thank you, Pastor Mel. So I am excited to announce that the desire and the vision that several have had is, is now coming true, which is we've wanted for a while to have an all night worship and prayer. So the first one, and that's very intentional, the first one <laughs> will be this next Saturday, the 4th of June. It's from 4 p.m. to about midnight, roughly. And definitely want to invite all, we want to invite Every age group, we want to invite junior high, high school, college, every age group, we want you to come. We want you to come. We want you to bring your easels and to paint for the Lord. We want you to bring your pads and paper and your pencil and to write poetry for the Lord. We want you to come and experience harp and bowl. We want you to come and, and, and pray and, or just fall on your face and, and soak in the Lord's presence. But we want you to be a part of it because this is the DNA of who CCF is. And this is the DNA of the body of Christ because Jesus said that, that we're a house of prayer. And that's what we want. And the Lord put on my heart about a week ago. I was telling Pastor Mel that as I was reading through uh, Exodus 15, it was, it was a song of Moses where he recounted what God did in the Red Sea. And he started off saying, you know, how awesome God was. He parted the sea. He drowned the Egyptians. And did that for several verses, just praising and worshiping God. Then he, then he turned and he started prophesying. And the nations that, you know, we're going to come against, they're going to be afraid. And, and they're going to fall. And then he, then he kind of landed the plane and said, and God is going to bring us into our destination. And that's what I felt like the Lord was putting on, on my heart. My heart for this first one is to be similar like to the, Mo, the song of Moses, which CCF, let's recount what God has been doing. Let's let's look back at what he's been doing and thank him for all he's done. And then let's prophesy this is what God is going to do in the coming days and months. And he's going to bring us individually and corporately into that destination that he has for us. So, and then we'll pray for nations and everything else. But I just really felt strong that that's what we're supposed to focus on as we do that. And go on the CCF website. I already sent out. Um, emails and links to those of you who worship and to respond and then those who want to worship go on the website and click on the link if you want to worship for now or everybody else just show up <laughs> so let's have fun in worship thank you Pastor Mel thank you Lance encourage you to come out even if you can only come out for a little while please come out and join us it's so critical and crucial in this time to be praying together amen Amen. Well, Acts 1 8 says, But you will receive power when my Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth, even New Zealand. Wait, what? What does that say? <laughs> we have the incredible honor this morning to pray for and commission. Mama Nadine Heinen as she goes to New Zealand on this next mission trip. Would you please give Mama Nadine a warm welcome? And Rose, I'm going to have you come up as well.
It is such an honor, church, to be able to come alongside and affirm and confirm Holy Spirit has set you apart just like he did Saul and Barnabas. Holy Spirit set them apart, and the Holy Spirit has set you apart once again. We've done this I don't know how many times, but once again, but this time to the nation of New Zealand. Church, what we're doing today is just like the early church, where Holy Spirit would set someone or someone's apart, and then the church would come alongside and confirm and affirm that by fasting and praying, which we have done this past year for you, and then the laying on of hands as we send out Mom and Nadine to come alongside the body of Christ where she's going and to minister to those in the body of Christ, but also to spread the good news of the gospel. And so this morning, we affirm that and confirm that in you, and we bless you. And I have asked Rose Awuchi to come and pray. Rose is an anointed apostolic intercessor and leader for the nations. She carries that. And she is a part of CCF, and so we welcome you. You are welcome in this house, and we thank you so much for praying for Mama Nadine this morning. Thank you, thank you. What a what a coming. Hallelujah. I have so much that the Lord put in my heart to pray, and as I was going through this week, to just ask the Lord. And I just felt I can pray without reading, but I may have, I may miss some stuff, and those that may be important. So I just want to pray for you, Mama. You have been so great. You have been so great. So, Father God, I thank you for Mama Nadine, a wonderful woman of God, a great woman of faith in all our life. She walked in your vineyard, God. She has totally, you know when you say you... Before she was formed in her mother's womb, Lord, you knew her. And you put this spirit of missionary to become a missionary, going all around the world. Father God, I thank you for the compassionate missionary work you have put in our heart. In that you speak to her heart every time. And she listened. And like some people say, here am I. The Lord calls and she say, here am I. So, Lord, we just thank you for a heart like that that you have given us. Whether it's uh, when she was in Oak, Oak, Oak Coast, California, in the Middle East, South Africa, and now a new mission to New Zealand. I thank God for this, oh God. I welcome her in this new house that she's going over to bring, to re re receive, to give people love and comfort, to give them restoration and healing to give peace, to give joy. Lord, I thank you for the manifestation of this, oh God. Only you can do this. Lord, I declare your glory on her. We will flow in, the, in this house, in this jubilee, she told me, jubilee, in this jubilee house. Our word said in John 17, 22, he said, Jesus said, my glory, my glory I gave to you as the Father gave. God has given you a glory. But it's not just for you to keep the glory because as the people come, Father God, we pray that this glory will be shared. This glory will be flowing, will be showered on all the people that will come in the name of Jesus. Father God, we thank you, oh God, that your presence will fill that house. Your glory will fill, oh God. And Isaiah 62, 2 and 3 said, the Gentiles shall see your righteousness and the kings your glory. They shall be called by a new name, which the mouth of the Lord will name. You shall also be a crown of glory in the hand of the Lord, and a royal denim in the hand of the glory. So today we declare, Mama Nadine, that this new, this glory that you are carrying with righteousness and the, uh, and the glory of God, we declare, O oh God, that it will reign in that house, it will reign with you, and you'll be a new a royal denim. This new glory that is shining, the voice of the Lord will begin to speak. The voice of the Lord will speak to you. The voice of the Lord will show around the building. The voice of the Lord will hold, and the host of heaven will be with you. 
and all the areas. So, Lord, we crown your daughter, Mama Nadine, with your glory. We say the royal then and will continue. Father God, I declare, oh God, that we cover her with the blood of Jesus. We declare that Psalm 91 on her, that he that dwells in the secret place of the Most High God will abide under the shadow of the Almighty. She's under your protection and over your shadow, oh God. Father God, in that dwelling place, in that place, no evil, no evil will ever come near in the name of Jesus. So Father, we just thank you. We thank you for favor. We declare favor that will come. Extraordinary favor, supernatural favor, divine favor that comes only from you. Father God, that you bring in people that will go, that will pursue her. They will pursue and overcome her with all the needs. Father God, you've set her up that all the needs that she needs, oh God, destiny helper showing up. Destiny helper will come and to locate her in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you, oh God. We thank you, Father God, for the spirit of discernment, the spirit of wisdom that will flow upon her. We thank you, my God and my Father, King of glory, for provision. We thank you, Father God, that you bless her. You are Jehovah Jireh. You provide every need that she needs, every financial resources, everything that she needs, Father God. We thank you. We thank you, King of glory. You that have a cat. <laughs> A, a cattle, on, a thousand cattle on a hill. Father God, you will provide every need, every need. She has not to worry, God. Lord, you are Jehovah Rapha. Lord, anything, any no sickness, no disease will come near her. Nothing, oh God, in our territory will not even come near. In the name of Jesus, Father God, we thank you for the shalom, Jehovah Shalom, the peace that surpasses all understanding, the peace that only comes from you surrounding and giving a greater anointing greater blessing fresh anointing new way lord and so that let every person your kingdom shall come your kingdom will be established in this building your kingdom will be established which is um, righteousness peace and joy in the holy ghost so the holy spirit will take over and took everything that you have as god has given to you we declare this in jesus name I love you. Well, since this is family, family time, I want to talk to the young kids. Are they out there? <laughs> I knew I wanted to be a missionary when I was like eight or nine years old. That's a long time ago. <laughs> And you know that God can speak to you too. I think, you know, that scripture, it says the disciples were shooing the kids away. Don't bother Jesus. And he said, no, let them come. And he put them on his lap. Jesus loves children. I have taught for over 30 years. I know that God speaks through children. Because I would have students come up to me and they would share something. And I would think, oh my gosh, you know, it was from a word from the Lord. I had students pray, and when they'd get in their prayer groups, and then they would, one would come up and say, where is Mongolia? We got Mongolia this morning. I'm like, well, I'll show you, and I showed them on the map. And then they go, oh, good, and then he went back. Well, they were praying that God would blind the eyes of the guards because they were going into Russia at that time, and it was closed. So I know God speaks to children. So any children in here that hear my voice, you ask Jesus, what do you want me to do? Show me. Show me. And he will show you. Because he loves to speak to children. Even Samuel heard Jesus when he was little. So that's all I have to say. <laughs> But I'm so grateful for CCF. You've been so loving. I've been to so many different types of groups. And people have been so welcoming. So thank you very much for welcoming me. And I'll be back in three months because I'm exploring <laughs> right now. So. What an honor. What an honor to stand by this general in God's army. 
that's for sure. Well, one of the visions that the Lord has given Mama Nadine is to open up what's called Jubilee Inn, which will be a place where other missionaries and, and, and workers in the field can come and be refreshed and ministered to after they've been out in the field for a long time. And again, also to spread the, the good news of the gospel. But the Lord gave me an idea for a prophetic gift for her. And so I want to present that to her right now. It is a silver server. This represents the servant leadership of Jesus that flows in and through you so well and so beautifully. The silver stands for truth, which is the truth of the Lord Jesus Christ and the ransom that he paid for all. That servant leadership and that truth is within you. And it says on there, um, we put, let's see, Mama Nadine and Papa's Jubilee Inn, Acts 1-8-2022. So when we come to visit you, you can serve us a piece of pie and let us know, but we just want to bless you. And church, the other way that you can bless Mama Nadine as she goes, we are going to take a special offering today. So our basket's up front. Um, you can come and put any amount that you would like to, but I know that that will really bless her on her mission because really she just turns around and whatever she gets, she gives away. So Lord, we just thank you and we praise you for this time. We seal this commissioning time and we say yes and amen that you are sending Mama Nadine out and we are with her in our prayers and our hearts always in Jesus' name. Amen. We love you. Well, thank you, church. We, uh, if you will just point your eyes to the screen, we have one more announcement. Hello, and welcome to our family service. My name is Skylar, and I am going to be a ninth grader here at Cucamonga Christian Fellowship. Whether you're connecting with us online or right here in this room, we are excited to have you join us for our Promotion Sunday service. If you would like to make giving a part of your worship today, please take this opportunity to give in person or visit our website for ways to give online. And thank you for partnering with the ministry and vision of CCF. Since today is our family service, we are going to say an all church blessing. Please stand, extend your hands, and join us in declaring these words over our whole CCF family. May love and faithfulness stay with you always, that you would know peace that surpasses understanding. May you strive to become kingdom people, fully and deeply loved and we commit today to encourage, support, and love you always. Amen. Ooh, amen. Amen. Good morning, CCF, and happy Promotion Sunday to all of our students, our kids. It is a very, very exciting Sunday that we get to celebrate together. <laughs> um, I have been reflecting on the cycle of school. And I think it's something that as adults, once you leave school, you don't get to actually experience, unless you are a parent or you work in education, you don't get to experience that cycle where you work really hard for nine to 10 months and then you get a break and you rest. And then fall comes and you restart again. And it's this reset every year that our students get. But we as adults don't get that, right? I mean, the new year is probably the closest thing that we have to a reset. Uh, but you're still working 24-7 all the time, 365 days. So as I was reflecting on this idea of the cycle of the school year and how are we going to reset this summer, I was thinking about one of mine and my kids' favorite things to do together, which is to watch a show called Bluey. Anyone heard of Bluey? <laughs> Okay, all the parents are like, absolutely, we love Bluey. Hey, let me tell you this. Bluey is the only cartoon show as an adult that I watch by myself. <laughs> Not lying. Watch by myself. I put my kids to bed, and I'm like, oh, I didn't get to watch that last episode. I wonder what happened. And then I will go and watch it by myself. I love this show. We actually celebrated last year, uh, on this weekend, a year ago, season two of Bluey came out. And this is a picture of how we celebrated. My, my three kids and I 
We made um, blue frosting cinnamon rolls, uh, and we celebrated by watching a whole morning of Bluey on Disney+, Plus, and it was so much fun. So, Bluey is about a family of dogs who live in Australia, which is just so appropriate for our church. Uh, <laughs> and Bluey is the oldest daughter, uh, and then she has a sister named Bingo, and then the mom's name is Chili, and the dad's name is Bandit, and the whole show is just about their life and what they do, and it is so inspiring. I um, am very, very excited that today for family service, I'm actually going to let Bluey introduce what we are going to be focusing on for this morning. So this episode is called Baby Rays. They do that every time something happens, and then this episode of Bluey is called, oh, I love it so much, Baby Race. I think that often what happens with the cycle of the school year, and we even as adults find ourselves doing this, with a cycle of reset often comes a reflection on comparison. Inevitably, we will end the year and then we will start comparing ourselves. Well, did I get this, that kind of award or look at what they're doing. Comparison seeps in in all areas. And we are, as adults are not immune to this. We are in just as much danger as comparing ourselves to one another, when, especially with social media, in all of our fields, with work, with our home, with our kids, with our marriages, with our friends our finances, and even our spirituality, right? We are in danger of comparing. When I think of how Jesus talked about compar comparison, I'm always drawn to the story of Mary and Martha. It's one of my favorite stories in the New Testament. Uh, and that's where we're going to land today. So if you have your Bibles, turn to Luke 10, and we are going to be exploring the story of Mary and Martha, two sisters who are very different, very, very different, but in different ways, further Jesus' ministry. So Luke chapter 10, verse 38, and that's where we're going to start. So here we go. As Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet, listening to what he said. Now, I want to stop there for a sec because there are so many key details in just these two sentences. The first one is that it was a massive honor for Jesus to come to the home of Martha. And it doesn't say it's the home of Lazarus, her brother, and Martha. It doesn't say that it's the home of Mary and Martha. It's Martha's home. That's huge, because in that time, women often didn't own their own home. And so the fact that Jesus is bestowing this great honor out of all the homes in the village, he goes to Martha's house, and she welcomes him in, and she's the one that's providing the hospitality for Jesus and the disciples. And then the second sentence, she has a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. Both of these women are exemplifying amazing cultural breakthroughs because as a woman, Mary has positioned herself in the room, not going around and doing things that I think mostly women would be doing. She has positioned herself at the feet of Jesus, front and center, and is sitting and listening and learning from him. That's huge. And the fact that Jesus was totally fine with it. Absolutely, Mary, you come and sit here. I'm going to talk right to you. I'm going to teach you. So right off the bat, we see that Martha has been bestowed a great honor in the village because Jesus has come to her house. And I actually think it's quite a bit probably how Chili felt when Bluey rolled over for the first time. Like, oh, I know, it's just so early. It's, they're just the most specialist ever, which I'm telling you, I did that every single kid, every single one of my kids. I'm like, oh my gosh, they're the genius. Look at them. It's brilliant what they're doing. We can't help it as parents, right? But I'm sure that Martha had a feeling of almost kind of like, huh, Look at me. I, Jesus is coming to my house. That's got to feel really good, and it should. And then we see that Mary walks in and sits at Jesus' feet and is bestowed another honor. And I'm, you can almost see, we're going to watch in the scripture, but you can almost see the trail starting to happen where Martha is on this huge high that Jesus is at her house. And now all of a sudden her sister is showing her up by sitting and learning at Jesus' feet. Louis is definitely not winning that baby race. Bum shuffle. 
<laughs> my son. He's like, I love it. <laughs> I know, buddy. I know. I'm doing this for you. <laughs> Bluey wasn't winning the baby race. And I love how Chili just dives into, well, we've got to fix this problem. It must, it, we are able to fix this problem. Let's read all the parenting books. Let's go to the doctor. Let's ask people. Let's continue to compare ourselves. Let's continue to try to win a race on someone else's terms, right? And that's where we find Martha. So back to Luke 10, verse 40. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. And she came to Jesus, him, and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Tell her to help me. Now, I think this is where the disconnect begins. When Mary, when Martha starts to compare her current life, her current situation to someone else's, and she starts to think she's holding the short straw. She's comparing herself and what she's doing to what Mary's doing, and she's starting to think, I'm holding the short straw. Lord, what is going on? Tell her to help me. But isn't that the trap that we all kind of get caught in sometimes? When I look at their life or their house or their friendships or their marriage or their kids or their job or their finances or their spiritual life, so much better. Grass is always greener on the other side. And disconnect starts to sit right on your shoulder. And oh, it's such a poison, right? Comparison is a trickster because it never tells the full story. You all, especially with what we have in today's world with social media, where you can put up the most perfect picture of your family or the most perfect Christmas card, but no one ever sees the pre-meltdown before that picture or the absolute chaos of trying to wrangle the kids into the clothes before you take the picture or the bribery that happens just for them to sit still, right? No one sees that. You just see the most perfect Christmas card ever. Side note, that's why I started doing selfies actually outside for my children because I'm like, eh, nope, we're not going to try to do a group shot. Everybody's getting their own individual frame. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> so let's see what Jesus, how Jesus responded to this. Verse 41, Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed, or indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better and will not be taken away from her. Now that there's a key phrase in there that I want to hone in on, is that Jesus gently reminds Martha that she is worried and upset about many things. Martha's desire to be a superb hostess caused her anxiety and hard feelings towards her sister, and that was the outbreak. Now, I don't believe that the issue for Jesus is that Mary chose to sit and listen and Martha chose to play host. I don't think that was Jesus' issue because he doesn't scold Martha for what she's doing. He tells Martha, no, you're worried and you're upset. That's the key in this. It's not that Mary has chosen the action that is better. It's that Mary has chosen the disposition that is better. It's only after Martha actually complains to Jesus and compares herself to her sister that Jesus says something to her. He never rebuked her when she was bustling around and playing hostess. In fact, he honored her by coming to her house, remember? Scripture said that that's the house that Jesus chose in the entire village to come and visit and lay rest at. It was Martha's house. So he doesn't rebuke the fact that she is playing hostess. Martha's attitude was the problem in this story because Martha wasn't running her own race. When we keep our eyes on Christ and we keep our hands extended in front of us and we run our own race, we cannot lose. We can't lose. When we keep our focus directly on him, we can't lose. CCF kids, CCF students, CCF adults, let's not get bogged down by what others are doing or accomplishing or looking like. As long as we are running our race with our focus on Christ, we can't lose. And you will be all the better for running your own race instead of trying to run someone else's. 
We meet Martha two more times in scripture in the New Testament. The first one is when her brother is being raised from the dead. Lazarus is being raised from the dead by Jesus. And the second time is just a real quick note in Luke 12, verses 1 and 2. And it says, six days before Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, where Lazarus was, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. And so they gave a dinner for him there. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those reclining with him at the table. Quick note, Martha served. But I think that's a huge encouraging detail within scripture. Because this time, scripture doesn't say that Martha was bustling around or frazzled or really, you know, stressed out. Martha served. I think that Martha was able to serve without resentment by the third story. I think that she was no longer trying to run someone else's race or trying to prove something that she wasn't. She was doing her own race. And scripture says, Martha served. She knew that Jesus was the Messiah. She felt seen, she felt known, and she, was res- she knew that Jesus respected her. And that knowledge gave her all the freedom in the world to not worry, to not be anxious about the opinions of anyone else. She was free to serve and to love and to rejoice because whom the Son has set free, they are free indeed, right? Amen. So CCF, I want to pray a benediction over us as we commission our students on this promotion Sunday, our family service. Could you stand with me, extend your hands out, and let's pray this over ourselves and our students. Father, we thank you for the cycle of seasons that allow us to reset and rest and start again. Thank you for our students and our kids at CCF who have run a good race this year and made it to summer. We pray a blessing over these next two and a half months that they would experience you in new ways, that you would find moments of joy with them, and that they would live this summer to the fullest. And Father, may we as a body run our own race, seeking to constantly raise our arms up to you through whom we can do all things. Amen. 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 Run your own race, CCF. Go in peace.